Hi guys, welcome to Tech Geek. So today we are back with daily leak code challenge problem. That's fine. First and last position of element in a sorted array. So this is a leak code medium 34 question. Now before beginning this question, this question was already asked on the June daily challenge, and the solution is already uploaded there. I'll have shared the link of one solution in my description, so you can refer to that. That solution was using a binary search, okay? And the next solution, the one which I will be referring to right now, is a version of it that's a different one, okay? So for this question, we have various varieties how to deal with it. So it could be anything you want to go up with and how easy you think that particular position is, okay? So that's what you need to do. Now, before beginning this, I'd like to request you all to please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. And if in case uh, there's any query you'd like to know, do let me know. I'll be there to help you. Okay? Now, let's begin with the solution. Okay. Let's see what the question says. The question says that we have been given an array of integers, nums, right? In a non-decreasing order, that means they are in ascending order. It specifies this, starting from the ending position, uh, find the starting and the ending position of a given target. Now, starting and ending position refers to in any array, okay? In any array, if you find any number, let's say the array is 1, 2, 3, 3, Okay, now in this, you have these many things. You need to find the starting and ending. That means for a number, any number that's your target. Let's say there can be many occurrences. So the one from where it begins and from the one where it ends, we have to give these positions. Okay, and we have to return the, ta uh, given the target value, we have to find the starting and ending position. So there is a difference between the words. Okay. You have to give its position. Position refers to, let's see. Okay. Let's see this. 5, 7, 7, 8, 8, 10. This is your 8 as a target. So let's see this. 0, 1, 2, 3. 3 and 4. There is no further coming up. So 3 is your starting and 4 is your end. Similarly, if the target is 6, it's not there. That means you will return minus 1, minus 1. And for others, it would be like 0. So this is how it's going on. Now one solution is an iterative solution. If you go up, okay, iterative solution will uh, give you an implementation that's uh, based on binary index. Okay. Now there could be others too. Other solutions are specifically like you need to search an element, you need to go up with it. So there could be any number of solutions. There could be n number of solutions for this problem. Uh, like, let's come here. Let's see. Okay. Let's see. Let us consider we have an array. One, two, three, 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 three four, five, six. Okay. This is an array. So, number of elements here we have zero, one. Let's write the index also. <coughs> so we have nine elements here, and now we have this six. Initially, we'll take a resultant array that will carry on number list, whatever you can take array list also. Now it's up to you. Okay. That will initially contain minus one, minus one. Okay. Now we have an input. Actually, they want to say is find the first reference at the second reference. Let's take a point where our target given is 3. Okay. Now, tar uh, let's talk about the brute force approach. Now, whenever we talk about any problem, there is one thing that's known as brute force approach. How you can do is iterate, take an array, or you can say take, an, take a variable i. Okay. This i will go from 0 to n minus 1 
that means 0 to n. Initially, as soon as for the element i, you find that a of i is double equals to tau. Okay, as soon as you get this, keep this first as this i and break this chain. Okay, take another loop that will now begin from this i. Okay, take another loop that will begin from this i. And will go up to n minus 1. So let's say we took another loop that begin from this particular first, beginning from i means beginning from first to n minus 1. As soon as you find that a of j is not equal to, okay, it's not equal to j, that means we got a discontinuation. So our second, or you can say, result of 2 will be j minus and then take this. Okay. Then you can write like resultant of 0 as first and the, or you can directly result, return this. This is the concept that would come up. Okay, that would come up in your mind. Now if we see this particular array that's given to us, how we will go up. Okay, talking about 0. Initially I went from 0 and 1. Is it equal to target? No. Until 3. As i is equal to 3, we get a point where ai is equal to target. Yes, it's 3. So, first is equal to i. i is 3. Break the chain. j will now go from 3 to 8. Check. 3 or you can, it's better you take with 1 plus. Okay? That's better to avoid one result. Okay? 4. Is it equal? Yes. So this condition doesn't come up. Is it equal? Yes. This now at 6. It's not equal. Yes. This is true. That means j would be j minus, uh, sorry, second would be j minus 1. j minus 1 is 5. And you get your answer. So this is the condition that you need to go up for. Okay. You can take up the same thing in a modified version now. You ran a loop. The same thing which we did right now. You can do it. You take a loop. Okay. will take a loop uh, for i equals to 0 to n minus 1. As soon as you get a of i is equal to target, keep a flag variable. Okay. Flag 1 if first variable is found. Flag 2 if second variable is found. So as soon as you find the first one, make this as true. And this will already be false right now. Now this is false, so okay, let's take this. Let's see this. Okay. Now see. In the first one, as soon as we found out that AI1 is true. So while checking this condition, we will check this until not of flag one. Not of flag one. Why? Because initially flag 1 and flag 2 both were false. Okay. So we will check this it's equal to target only when if this is false and we will store this value here. Now for the second one a of i is equals to t only if flag 1. Why? As soon as this stops, okay, as soon as this stops, we will keep on searching, okay, we will keep on searching until this is true. So, once you get a point, you will begin with this searching and to the last one, as soon as you get this, flag 2 should also be true, okay, or you can even write and or better if you include this also but even though if you don't include this will also work. Flag 2 is 2 and resultant of 1 is equals to as soon as this happens you can take it and then go for it. Okay. 
so this is kind of a second implementation you won't be going to each and every element you'll just be taking the modified version but if uh, you ask me frankly which approach should be taken up so according to me if you want to go up in your interview experience binary search one would be the most preferable one and if in case you feel it, like it's something you are not clear with then do let me know i'll be there to help you now let's see what the code looks like okay see here initially we have this resultant as zero okay now we to took two boolean flag one flag two iterate now check until the sql and this is false that means we haven't searched for the first element show it as soon as we got the first element we will search it again and as soon as we get the other one flag 2 is true and here we will check if flag 1 is true and flag 2 is not true that means the number occurred only once when would this condition be let's see this condition will be when we have this array and the target is 3 ok now let's run loop. initially we check is num of i equal to target no again is num of i equal to target no num of i equal to target yes is and not of lag one not of false is true yes this condition is specified so this resultant of 0 will now store the value to 0 1 2 the array of this and flag 1 is now true okay but flag 1 is now true it was if condition so for else if it won't go it will go to the next iteration that's 4 again it will check no it now this part will run nums of 4 nums of i is 4 is it equal to target no 5 not so this is how we ended so at last we got flag was true but flag 1 was false so in this case we can consider that both of the positions the first position and the last position were same so we will store result of 1 equal to result of 0 and then we can return the result this is how things will work now if you say that both were false that means the number didn't even occur then in that case initially we have this minus 1 minus 1 already there if you can see here we have minus 1 minus 1 so this minus 1 is nothing ok yeah this minus 1 is nothing but it's actually your result that could return if you have nothing let's say our target was 0 ok it will iterate but none of them is found so what would be not even this condition would work in that case it will directly result, uh, return the result in the result of this. So that's how you have to go. Keep that in mind. Okay. Now if there are any queries do let me know if there's anything you want to know. Please refer to the binary search or binary search solution too because that's a pretty better, better solution and I would prefer that you guys should go up with it. And in case there's something missing out or any interview experience, so let me know. Thank you.